From an underground laboratory in Pennsylvania comes the Senor Fancy Pants Show. You may not think it's the greatest podcast you've ever heard, but it's definitely the best one you're listening to right now. Please give it up for your host, Senor Brian Fancy Pants. All right. Thank you so much. You are too kind to me, fake audience. Welcome to episode 13 of the Senor Fancy Pants Show. That's right, lucky number 13. Wait, isn't 13 an unlucky number? Yes, that's true. In some countries, including the United States, the number 13 is known as an unlucky number. Some people are very superstitious about it. Lincoln, do you know what superstitious means? No. Well, if that's a new word for any of you out there, a superstition is a belief that something can cause good or bad things to happen, even when there's no logical or scientific reason for believing it. For example, if my co-host Lincoln thought that wearing his socks inside out would help the Philadelphia Eagles win football games, that would be an example of Lincoln being superstitious. Or if someone thinks that breaking a mirror will bring them seven years of bad luck, That's just a superstition. There's no real reason why these things would bring good or bad luck. And I'm not sure why, but the superstition about the number 13 is taken pretty seriously. In fact, many hotels and larger buildings in the U.S. do not even have a 13th floor listed. You'll notice that the elevator buttons go straight from 12 to 14. Of course, we know that the 14th floor is really the 13th floor, but don't tell that to people with triskaidekaphobia. What's that? I'm glad you asked. Triskaidekaphobia is a very real fear of the number 13. So we may have a few listeners that that decided not to download this episode if they're afraid of the number 13, if they have triskaidekaphobia. Which is too bad because this is going to be our greatest episode ever. That is a guarantee. If you disagree, we will give you back all of the money that you spent downloading this episode. Isn't this podcast free? Yes, yes it is, which is awesome. And speaking of awesome things, it's time for one of our favorite segments. It's time for... Keith Brockway's Question of the Day. Keith Brockway's Question of the Day. Today's question is, what do you think is the most disgusting food in the world? It's so interesting that we all taste things differently. A food that one person thinks is horrible can be another person's favorite food. And no one is wrong. You can't make yourself like something. Although sometimes a food can taste bad to you when you're a kid, and then you could end up liking it when you're older. Like for me, I didn't like sushi when I was a kid, and now it's one of my favorite foods in the world. All right, let's read Keith Brockway's answer first. What does Keith think is the most disgusting food in the world? He wrote... Brussels sprouts. He said his mom used to make them for herself all the time, and it made the whole house smell awful. He's also not a fan of eggplant. Yeah, Brussels sprouts are definitely one of those foods that a lot of people say they don't like. I personally don't mind them. I like them. They are quite pungent, though. Pungent? Yeah, the word pungent means having a sharply strong taste or smell. And I would say that uh, Brussels sprouts definitely qualifies. All right, let's see what kinds of answers we got from some of our listeners. Jolene said, liver and onions, nasty smell, nasty taste, and nasty to look at. She also added plenty of exclamation points, so she's pretty passionate about her hatred for liver and onions. Crystal said she doesn't like coconut, which is crazy. I love coconut, don't you, Lincoln? Yeah. Yeah, coconut's delicious. She says that it smells like suntan lotion. Yuck. Keith Brockway, though, was quick to point out that it's actually the other way around. Suntan lotion smells like coconut. And um, I actually, I enjoy the smell of suntan lotion. So I I have no idea what you're talking about, Crystal. All right, what else? We had a few more votes for Brussels sprouts. Another vote for liver. John said he doesn't like okra. Jen doesn't like pickled herring, which is, of course, a type of pickled fish. That actually does sound, sound kind of disgusting to me as well. What about you, Lincoln? Pickled fish? Probably I'd try it. You would try it? All right, fair enough. 
We had a couple people say that they don't like Vegemite, which is a very popular um, spread in Australia. Vegemite is a concentrated yeast extract. It's a dark brown colored spread and it's quite salty. A common way to eat it is to spread it lightly on some buttered toast. It's not my favorite. Lincoln, I know you've tried it, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah, when we were in, over in Australia. Yeah, what are, what are your thoughts on Vegemite? It's just way too salty. Yeah, we're not used to it here, so it's too strong for us. All right, my friend Al said he doesn't like crawfish. All right, that's an interesting choice. Mary doesn't like brie, which is a type of soft cheese. I like brie. It's not bad. Spread it on a cracker. Delicious. Jillian doesn't like bacon because she's crazy. Now, she wrote that she understands that this is weird, and it is. Steve has some strong feelings about celery, and April agrees with him. That's weird to have strong feelings about celery. Lincoln, do you like celery? No. Yeah, but you don't like a lot of things. All right. Nick hates every kind of casserole. Me too. Really? You hate every kind of casserole? Yes. All right. You and Nick should be friends. You hear that, Nick? Send us a message. You guys can start an anti-casserole club. All right. Ashley hates warm tomatoes. All right. You like cold tomatoes, though, Ashley? Fair enough. All right. A few more. Cheryl doesn't like tripe. Lincoln, have you had tripe before? No. For those who don't know what I'm saying, it's tripe, T-R-I-P-E. And it's basically the stomach linings of cows and sheep. Sounds delicious. I've never had it, but there you go. My mom said she doesn't like mayonnaise. Lincoln, that's your grandmother. Do you share that? Do you, do you like mayonnaise or do you hate it? I hate it. Yeah, I thought so. Jason doesn't like flan. Lincoln, have you ever had flan? It's like a custardy dessert thing. Yeah, you wouldn't like it. You don't really like custard, do you? I don't. Yeah, it's kind of eggy. You don't like that stuff. All right, one more. My Aunt Cindy. She said she doesn't like cottage cheese. There's another one for you, Lincoln. You probably don't like cottage cheese, do you? I don't. Yeah, Lincoln doesn't tend to like uh, creamy, cheesy kind of things like that. So there you have it. We all have different tastes. Some people are very passionate about their hatred of certain foods. And here's an interesting uh, fact about Lincoln. He doesn't like any cereals, not even Cinnamon Toast Crunch or Cocoa Puffs, none. But he does eat waffles all the time. And he also likes pancakes, which of course is no surprise because pancakes are amazing. But don't just listen to me. Here's a song by the Boogers that says it all. Here are the Boogers with Give Me Some Pancakes. Well, that was one of the best punk rock songs about pancakes that I've heard all day. All right, are you ready for our next segment, Lincoln? Yes. Good, because it's time for our place of the day. Today, we're going to talk about a state that doesn't share its borders with any other state, a state that is home to nearly one and a half million people. We are talking about the great state of Hawaii. Here are some random facts about 
Hawaii. Hawaii is the only state made up entirely of islands. There are 137 different islands that make up Hawaii, but most of them don't have any people on them. There are eight main islands, but only seven of those have people living on them. The biggest island has the same name as the state, so of course it's called Hawaii. So most people refer to that island as the Big Island. That helps with any confusion. Hawaii became the 50th U.S. state in 1959. It is the most recent state to have joined the United States. Hawaii is the only U.S. state with two official languages. The two languages are English and, of course, Hawaiian. The Hawaiian alphabet only has 13 letters in it. I've just done the math in my head, and that is 13 fewer letters than we use in the English language. Barack Obama was born in Hawaii. That's right. The 44th president of the United States was born in Hawaii. It says it right there on his birth certificate. But that didn't stop some crazy people from believing he was born somewhere else. How weird is that? Pretty weird. All right, moving on. Hawaii's nickname is the Aloha State. Aloha is a Hawaiian word that you can use to say hello or goodbye. It's the same word for both words. The capital of Hawaii is Honolulu. Honolulu is also the largest city in Hawaii. It has an estimated population of around 360,000 people. It is located on the island of Oahu. There are no billboards in Hawaii. Billboards are those giant advertising signs that you usually see on the side of the road when you're driving down the highway. They're not very attractive, and sometimes they can be inappropriate. I'm not a fan of them. Good job, Hawaii. Hawaii has its own time zone. It's called Hawaiian Standard Time. Right now, Hawaii is five hours behind Pennsylvania, which is where we are. Hawaii doesn't do the whole daylight savings time thing either. So during our daylight savings time, they will be six hours behind us. Hawaii is the second widest state in the U.S. It's just over 1,500 miles wide, which is just over 2,400 kilometers. Alaska is the only state that is wider. Now you don't have to be one of those weird people who doesn't know what the two widest states are. You're welcome. All right, now let's do one more important fact. Hawaiians eat around 7 million cans of Spam each year. Now, for those that don't know, Spam is a brand of cooked meat in a can. It is made out of pork and it needs no refrigeration. Apparently, it became popular in Hawaii right after World War II. There were a lot of soldiers in Hawaii and the government needed to feed them. It was extremely hard to get fresh meat to Hawaii. And since Spam doesn't need to be refrigerated and has a long shelf life, a lot of it was sent to Hawaii to feed the soldiers. Obviously, it has remained very popular since then. Seven million cans is a lot of Spam, Hawaii. All right, before we move on to our next segment, I want to talk about one more thing related to Hawaii. One thing that many people associate with Hawaii is the ukulele, which is actually pronounced ukulele, but outside of Hawaii, most people pronounce it ukulele. The ukulele is a small four-stringed guitar-like instrument that has a very unique sound. It's a very happy sounding instrument. It's hard to write sad songs on a ukulele. Right now, we're going to play a song about the ukulele written by Casper Baby Pants. Here is the song, Always Keep a Ukulele in Your Trunk. As you roll along with the sun on your back, you might go astray and run off the track. When that sun goes down, you might fall into a funk. So always keep a ukulele in your trunk. Always keep, always keep a ukulele, a ukulele. Lay, in lay in your trunk. That's what I say. That's what I say. Don't fill that space with tires and junk. Always keep a ukulele in your trunk. If you've got a friend who's feeling blue, there's only one sound that will do, do, do. Every frown in town loves to hear that plinky, plonky, plunk. So always keep a ukulele in your trunk. 
Always keep, Always keep a, ukulele. a ukulele. Lay in your trunk. Lay in your trunk. That's, what I say. That's what I say. Don't fill that space with tires and junk. Always keep a ukulele in your trunk. Hoo! <laughs> gonna have one why not have one more and if you have a pair why not three or four they make everything sound happy even heavy metal and punk that's why you should always keep a ukulele in your trunk oh always keep always keep a ukulele a ukulele lay in your trunk lay in your trunk that's what i say that's what i say don't fill that space with maps and jacks and boots and hats and tires and junk always keep a ukulele in your that's right always keep a ukulele in your trunk or for all you listeners out there in england and australia when casper baby pants says trunk he is referring to what you call the boot of your car. All right, next up, it is time that we learned about an animal. Animals are cool. Here are some facts about one of them. So one of the places that you can find the animal that we're talking about today is in the ocean surrounding Hawaii. How appropriate is that? We just talked about Hawaii earlier. So what is the animal, Lincoln? The green sea turtle. Here are some facts about the green sea turtle. Green sea turtles are one of the largest species of turtle. They weigh around 350 pounds or more on average, and they are usually around three or four feet long. There are a couple of other larger sea turtles like the leatherback and the loggerhead sea turtles, but the point is green sea turtles are quite large. All right, next fact. Female sea turtles lay a lot of eggs. When it's time for a green sea turtle to lay her eggs, she will dig a hole on the beach and lay somewhere between 75 and 200 eggs. After that, she will leave the eggs to fend for themselves. A couple months later, the eggs will hatch and the baby turtles will try to make their way to the water without getting eaten by predators. That's just how nature works. Green sea turtles can hold their breath for a very long time. Sea turtles need air to survive. But if they are resting or sleeping, they can hold their breath for around four to seven hours. If they're being active, then they normally come up to the surface of the water for air every couple of hours or so. They are named after the green color of the fat under their shell. I have nothing to add to that fact. It is estimated that green sea turtles can live for 80 years or more. That means there might be some sea turtles alive today that were around the last time the Dallas Cowboys won a Super Bowl. There could even be some sea turtles still living today that were born in the 1930s. All right, what's next? Green sea turtles are fast swimmers. Green sea turtles can swim up to 35 miles per hour. That's 56 kilometers per hour. This comes in handy when they're trying to get away from predators like tiger sharks. Green sea turtles can drink salt water. Yes, they spend most of their lives in the ocean, and since they need water to survive, they, need, they have to be able to drink the salty ocean water. They have a special gland that helps them to get rid of all the salt, and the salt comes out through their eyes. So if you see a green sea turtle crying, that's why. It's not because they are sad. When they are young, they are omnivores. When they are adults, they are herbivores. Adult green sea turtles eat mostly seagrasses and algae. When they are young, they will also eat insects and worms and some small crustaceans like crabs, lobsters, or shrimp. Green sea turtles are endangered. When a species of animal is considered endangered, it means that they are at a very high risk of becoming extinct if no, nothing is done to help them. So if you want to learn more about what you can do to help protect endangered species, check out theworldwildlife.org. A couple simple things you can do to help sea turtles is to pick up any trash or rubbish on the beach. Even if it's not your trash, keep the beaches clean. Also, 
If you come across any turtle eggs in the sand, leave them alone. All around the waters of Hawaii, the green sea turtles swim. They're playing with their friends and eating algae, and watching out for tiger shark fins. And if you love these beautiful creatures, here is something that I shouldn't have to teach. You gotta try not to disturb them, and you better keep your rubbish off the beach. Keep the beaches clean. Sea turtles, sea turtles, they're turtles that live in the sea. Sea turtles, sea turtles, they get all their lunches for free. Sea, sea turtles, sea turtles, they love to drink salt water tea. That song was brought to you by Tables. One of the top five pieces of furniture to put food on when eating a meal. Tables, sit at one today. All right, last week we mentioned that the Lego Movie 2 was out in theaters. Well, we ended up going to see it, and we really liked it, didn't we, Lincoln? Yeah. Yeah, if you're a fan of the first Lego movie, then there's no reason why you wouldn't like the sequel. It was really funny, and there was plenty of action and adventure. There were also some new characters, and the music was awesome, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, although, there was a song in the movie that is very similar to a song that I wrote for uh, one of our podcast episodes last August. If you're a fan of this show, you are, you might remember that back in like episode two, I think, I had written a song called I Can't Get This Song Out of My Head. Well, there's a song in the Lego Movie 2 that has the lyrics, this song's going to get stuck inside your head. So now it sounds like my song is kind of like a response to that song, I guess. But either way, when I finally release my song on the next album, then you all know that my song came out first. But anyway, the Lego Movie 2 was great. But if you don't have a sense of humor, and you don't enjoy fun-filled adventures, you might want to skip it. Now, speaking of the LEGO Movie 2, we mentioned on the last episode that LEGO has put out a series of minifigure blind bags specifically for the movie. Well, we ended up getting some of, the, some of them, and uh, Lincoln, which, which ones did you get? Which characters did you get in the blind bags? I got two of the Wizard of Oz characters. I got the Scarecrow and the Tin Man. Awesome. Those are, those are uh, some of the ones I was hoping you would get. I really like those Wizard of Oz characters. Well, we're probably going to get a few more before the next episode. So um, for those of you who haven't checked them out, go ahead and get some of them. They're awesome. All right. Sometimes at this point in the show, we like to say some terribly awesome jokes or awesomely bad jokes, however you want to put it. But today, Lincoln wanted to try doing some riddles. So we'll see how it goes. And if you like any of these, feel free to try them out on your friends this week. Lincoln, are you ready to try some riddles? Yes. All right, let's do this. All right, where do we start? I've got a whole list of riddles here, and I'm going to try them out on you. What word is spelled wrong in every single dictionary? Wrong. Wrong? Yes, the word wrong. It is spelled W-R-O-N-G in every dictionary. All right, here's another one. David's parents have three children, Snap, Crackle, and... David. All right, you didn't fall for that one. Um, what belongs to you but is used more by others? Your name. Man, you know all these already. I'm going to find one that you don't know. Let's see here. What kind of room has no doors or windows? Um, a bathroom? Well, no, that has doors. Oh, I yeah. hope. <laughs> Ours do, thankfully. Yes. The answer is kind of dumb. Are you ready for this? What? A mushroom. Oh. That sounds more like a bad joke than a riddle. All right. Let's see. Here's one. The more you take, the more you leave behind. Um, I don't don't know. know. The answer is stairs. You get it? Oh. Ah, yes. Genius. All right. Here's one. What time is it when an elephant sits on your fence? Um, I don't know. It's time to get a new fence. Oh. 
Yeah, because elephants are large. All right. And fences will be crushed under the weight of the elephant. You get it, right? Yes. All right. Here's another one. How do you make the number one disappear? You add G. Oh, you know that one? Yes, you add the letter G and it's gone. You gonna get it? Yeah, I All get right. it. Let's see here. What building has the most stories? Um, a uh, story? Stories. What building has the most stories? Are like levels, but you know, it works more than one way because this is a riddle. Um, probably a book. No, <laughs> it's the answer is a library. Get it? Because oh, yes. a library is filled with books. So you were on the right track. Did I say this one yet? How many apples grow on a tree? You didn't say it, and I, um, a few. No, the answer is all of them. Yeah. Ah. Oh, here's one that you actually gave me. So you know the answer to this one, but um, I don't know if everyone in the audience knows it. Here, listen to this one. How many books can you fit in an empty backpack? Think about it. Think about it. All right, Lincoln, what's the answer? Um, you can fit only one. That's right, because after you put one book in there, it's no longer empty. Yeah. All right, let's try a couple more here. I'm light as a feather, yet the strongest person can't hold me for more than five minutes. What am I, Lincoln? Your breath. That's right, you can't hold your breath for more than five minutes. Hmm, let's see here. All right, here's one for you. You walk into a room with a match, a kerosene lamp, a candle, and a fireplace. Which do you light first? The fireplace? No. Try again. You don't want to try? The answers are right there. Um, Do you just want me to tell you? Yeah. You got to light the match first. Do you get it? No. Well, you got to light the match in order to light the fireplace or the lamp or the candle. Oh. Yeah. All right. You didn't like that one? <laughs> Let's do one more. What begins with T, finishes with T, and has T in it? A teapot. All right. You knew that one. All right. There you go. Those are some riddles. Hopefully you liked some of them. Oh, wait. There's one more on this page. Let's, let's leave them with one more. No, no. I did that one. Never mind. How many apples? How many stories? Yeah, we did all of these. Oh, no. What can you catch but not throw? A cold. <laughs> yes, that's the answer. Man, you know a lot of riddles. All right, well, hopefully you enjoyed some of these riddles, but I think that's enough for today. This episode is probably super long right now. But before we go, I think it's time for another awesome song, don't you, Lincoln? Yeah. So are you ready for a catchy rock and roll song about UFOs? Yeah. You say yeah a lot. I like that. You agree with me on a lot of things. All right. Well, if you're ready for a rock and roll song about UFOs, then you're going to love this song by Joni Leeds and the Nightlights. It's called UFO. Enjoy. We were driving California when something appeared in the sky. It wasn't an airplane, not a spaceship. It wasn't a bird or a kite. It was hovering right over our heads. It was there for five minutes or so. It's a UFO. Oh, 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 What happened next was kind of fuzzy. It started to move in the sky. Very slowly, coming closer, was right above the stop sign. I said, hey, guys, are you seeing this? Or have I gone loco? Oh, oh, oh. They said, heck yeah, Joni, what in creation? It's a UFO. Oh, 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 oh. Just a head case. Maybe I'm now part of the alien race. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Uh -oh. UFO. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. UFO. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Don't call me crazy, crazy. Oh, uh oh.
Well, that's our show. Thank you so much for joining us. And please tell your friends about us. Check the podcast details for links to the amazing artists that we played on this episode. Also, if you're old enough to have Facebook, go like our page and send us a message. All right, go enjoy the rest of your day. I love you. Bye.